Hello everyone and welcome back to Crowley House Flower Farm. Today we are going to work together as a family. So I have Riley and Brayden with me and uh, they are going to be working on rejuvenating some of the herb gardens that we have. We have some raised beds that we grow a lot of herbs because it's pretty close to the house and as you know we like to cook a lot of wonderful meals on the farm and it's just easy to get to our herbs and be able to use them in culinary dishes that are fresh. So they are going to be rejuvenating that. We had some sage dye and a few other things over the winter. That's everything we have for this week. It's a pretty long list. Actually, I've been trying to do better of like shrinking things down, projects down. So it's not such an overwhelming task to get everything done. But this time of year, I think the list could go on and on and on and you would never end it. So I'm just going to tackle what I can and enjoy it because this time of year we are bouncing back and forth from those scattered rain showers to beautiful days and today we have overcast 60 degrees and it feels actually pretty good. So I'm going to get at it. The kids are up and getting ready to go and um, yeah we're gonna have fun today. So today I am making up really quick before we head out and do our project some iced tea. I love drinking hot tea, but this time of year we start to transition from hot into something that is refreshing. So when we are just working hard and you just need a special something that just gonna quench the thirst, we like to use farmhouse teas. Some of their teas are made for iced tea. So this one is Pina Colata Sweet Tea. So I'm gonna give it a whirl here. We're gonna try this one out. So I got some water going and I'm just gonna add a little bit to that and let it steep for about five to seven minutes. I like my tea a little bit strong, especially for when we chill it down. I just kind of keep it concentrated in the fridge and then I add my water ice and then add it to the strength that I like it. So we're gonna give this a whirl today. Family photos. Good. Smile. Me and my daughter. <laughs> this is mom's grandbaby. We also ordered this cute little seed starting kit from Farmhouse Teas, and it's for a herbal tea garden. You good? It's an herbal tea garden set, and it comes with this nice little booklet here, and this has some recipes of things you can make with the different herbs they're sending you, and cool things like chamomile rose jam, and Calm hand tea, yeah, no, calm head. <laughs> Excuse me, as a del I am ADD and dyslexic, we can look past that. Calm head tea, uh, cheer up tea, making a lot of teas in here. Um, but there's a lot of other fun things you can do with these different herbs. And they sent like this whole set of things. So in this I have, is it hyssop? Hyssop. Hyssop. Um, we have a packet of hyssop seeds. These all these seeds come from Botanical Interest, which is actually a seed company I really like working with. Um, you can find them in most like stores, at least any like farm su farm supply stores. So we have some true hyssop. I've never grown hyssop. Um, so we have some poppy California poppies in the color orange. These I have done research on actually. Um, I think I talk about these in a podcast episode of ours, Living Good Time podcast. We have some calendula, which we have this growing everywhere around the farm wildly, but I actually want to start some in some pots because I'm looking to have a little bit of a tea garden on the yurt's back porch, so that'll be fun. We have some beautiful bachelor button mix here. Don't know how to use these yet, but that's cool. Some purple echinacea. We also have this in the yard. That'll be fun to grow from seed because I do like using these in design. They don't like the heat that much, but I noticed that if you cut them at the right time and put them in water right away, they should be fine. And if not, they'll usually perk up. Lemon balm. This is just <laughs> like mint where it will explode everywhere, especially here where we live in the Pacific Northwest. So I highly recommend if you're gonna grow this, grow this in a pot. It spreads like crazy, okay? We got some holy basil. You know, what's so holy about it? Anyway, um, we have 
some lavender, which I've never grown this from seed, but Beth says she has. So this is Munstead lavender. Some jamon chamomile, yeah. <laughs> this will also spread like a wildfire. Be careful. I lived in Germany, I can do that. It's fine. <laughs> um, and then some common mint also to grow in a pot. I am probably gonna seed these up in the greenhouse along with a couple other um, types of herbs that I've been wanting to seed up. And yeah, you guys get to join me. Oh, that's a really nice one. Riley and I ventured out. We decided to run down to one of our favorite nursery, Garland's Nursery, which is just about 20 minutes from our house. And we're picking up some fresh herbs because some of our herbs have died. And so we need to find just a few to pop in and refresh the raised bed herb gardens around the house. So we thought we would take you along and show you kind of what we have going on and what we thought to add to our herb collection. So which ones did you get? Well, we're getting some mints. There's like a mojito mint. Yeah. Which is yeah, nice we'll for drinks. Get them out of there. I don't drink a lot of mojitos, but I might. You know? Who knows? <laughs> With your new patio? Yeah, and there was this one I liked. Was it this one? No. The berries and cream one. Oh, I like that one. Okay, yeah. let's get those two. You wanna do three mints? I just love mint. Okay, go ahead and put them in the cart. What did you get? Yellow fin. Okay, we just needed a few more. Yeah. So these are going in the garden. I also got a sweet potato to start. Never done sweet potato before. So that'll be interesting. Okay. Hey, did you get all your herbs? Yeah, we have to go find the cart now though. Little tulips. Aren't they pretty? So Riley and I picked up a ton of new starts from the nursery and we just got some little violas or pansies to put in this little Vigo garden that we have alongside the cottage greenhouse. We had a couple plants die over the winter and one of them was our sage and that was one request by my husband who is the culinary chef of the house. He asked if we can pick him up another one. So we're gonna um, stick them in this little garden here. We have a few things coming back from last year which is kind of fun to see and um, we're hoping this will kind of especially with a little added a little pansies and some green spots is just going to color up this area of the garden. this cute little 
Vigo Garden, I will put a link below in the description for you if you're interested. We got ours, like I said, a couple years ago and we absolutely love it. It's super easy to put together. And like I said, just doing something like a simple herb garden like we're doing, it's really, really nice just to kind of keep everything together. It's very clean and classic. They come in different colors too, which is really, really fun. Okay, so I put down a layer of compost and we're gonna add in some starter fertilizer for all these lovely herbs and get them planted. Okay, so I like using this Biotone starter uh, fertilizer. It really, really helps, and we've noticed this with everything that we plant here on the farm. Just adding a little bit of this to the hole makes the survival rate of your little start so much better. So I, I grabbed a big bag. This is a brand new one. It's really heavy. <laughs> but we're gonna go ahead and use some of this in all the little holes. Righty, get it open. One nice thing about a hori hori is just you can use it as a knife. I'm gonna set everything out and see how it looks before I plant. That way I can kind of play with how everything goes. So the first thing is this is a, just a gallon size of sage. Now I do want to say this, you know, we're starting some seeds, herb seeds by seeding it so much cheaper than buying it. These are like $12 for something like this. The little four inch pots were almost $6. So we're just like, okay, let's just do a little bit to get the things that are harder for us to seed or Riley got a few extras. But um, this one was the one we were after and there was only one of them. So, okay, so Sage, this is Sage Begarten. I believe I'm saying that right. It is a full sun. This gets a lot of full sun afternoon from morning to night, basically. So you wanna water it two to three times a week week until it's established and it grows about 24 inches tall by 24 wide so I want to give it plenty of room so I'm just gonna tuck it back here in the back and that's gonna be like if you were planting up any garden the taller things go in the back and then you have the shorter things up front so I'm gonna start with that here cilantro this is Riley's favorite this gets about eight to 10 inches tall. So I'm gonna have that tucked right in front. So this is Italian flat leaf parsley. Riley has another parsley over here, so I'm gonna tuck it right next to that one. So Riley bought a dill. We have dill out in the main garden as well, but she just wanted something beautiful here. Dill gets really tall, so I'm gonna stick that in the back. We have a curly little parsley, so I'm gonna stick that next to this grouping of parsleys. So we have several mints. This is berries and cream. I've never heard of this one. It looks like it's gonna trail a little bit, so I think I'm gonna tuck it up against the edge so it can kind of spill over. I think that would be really pretty. As you know, with mints, you have to be really careful. Even with lemon balm, they will spread like crazy. So tucking them into a raised garden bed or even something like a pot will work really, really well. So in fact, you can see this little runner um, tried to root itself even there. <laughs> with no soil or anything like that. So you could cut this off and make a totally new plant. Super easy to propagate mint. This is mint julep, which Riley got because, she, oh my God, it smells so good. This one is good for drinks um, if you're making a mint julep. Uh, this one is mojito as well. And so we have several mints on the farm. We like to add them to fresh salads. They're so good with that just little bit chopped up in the salad. It's great on watermelon. So we definitely wanted to add this to the garden.
So I have another little spot that we put herbs. Well, herbs are all throughout my garden. But I decided that it was too crowded for the mint because mint can really get out of control. So I'm gonna go pop it in where we had the Russian sage and it just kind of died back. Um, I'm, so I'm gonna pull those out and then tuck the mint in partly because we have some mint over there as well. And you know, the only thing I can kind of think of as I planted up this, I kind of want those copper really pretty tags. I've been wanting to do this forever. So I've got to just force myself to get some ordered and then be able to write really nicely on all the tags of what variety is what. That way, when my husband comes out, he knows exactly what he's pulling in from the garden for whatever he's making, whatever dish it is. So I'm gonna head over to this garden and get this one kind of zhuzhed up as well, and hopefully it turns out well. Okay, so you can kind of see how our sages just kind of, a lot of it died. You see some new growth coming on? And there's like a whole new plant just randomly coming up with all this mint. So I'm just gonna clean up this bed and get it looking better, take out these Russian sages and start over. Not Russian sage, it's just regular sage that we grow for culinary. I don't know why it's I can- It's white sage. It's white sage? Yeah. Riley knows, she's the expert on all things medicinal, herby, herbal. Yes, you are. Okay, so I just finished up the second bed and what I did was I put all the mints pretty close together, closer than the tag said. And part of the reason is I kind of want them to kind of fill in together and it's a little bit easier to control that way. I don't know, <laughs> mints are just hard. But I'm loving how it turned out. Now this tank, galvanized tank, we got when we first moved in and I just waited until the hardware store had them on sale. I think we picked them up for about a hundred bucks. Uh, they were like, you know, 20% off or something like that. We got three of them right in this little garden. Two of them have strawberries in them and the last one has just the herb garden in it. And this was our original herb garden. And then we just started scattering herbs throughout the whole garden, through the circle garden, up by the house. And then we have the new one, which is the Vigo garden that we put in a couple years ago. So I'm loving how both of them kind of cleaned up, turned out. I just curved back. I just cut back everything as far as just kind of made them a little more clumpy. There was some time in here. I think I had some English thyme and then just some regular thyme. I have some oregano, like a spicy oregano, some chives that were pushing up, but they weren't getting enough light. So they're really leggy and kind of soft. So I'm hoping those kind of bounce back. And then we have the three mints. So the mints we planted today, which I had one coming back um, from last year, which was a spearmint. Really like that one, but we've got the strawberry and cream, the new one that we picked up, the mojito, and then we have the mint julep that we planted. So it'll be a fun little garden, especially this summer when we're making all those salads and drinks and have friends over. It's kind of fun to say, hey, let's go cut some herbs. And we head out to these little gardens and pick a few whatever that we need for to spice up our meal. I hope this video inspires you to, even if you have a small space, to get out, find even some pots or just like one of these little galvanized tanks. You can grow so much in one of these small spaces. It's amazing. I can just turn them over and turn them over, add some flowers to them, have like maybe a pot of tomatoes in one of them, you know, just like kind of group it out. Don't be afraid to cram things in because in the end, all you have to do is kind of cut some of it out like I just did today. Okay, well, let's check in with Riley. She is seeding up all those beautiful seeds that we bought from Farmhouse Teas. I'm excited for that tea garden. We're gonna plant that over by the yurt and I think it's just gonna turn out absolutely beautiful. I am a huge lover of teas, as you know, and like I said, I'm gonna put a link below for both the iced tea that we made today, which is oh, 
so good. And then this little tea garden, which is kind of fun. Riley and I are looking forward to cutting from that and experimenting this fall and just kind of drying some of these herbs and uh, just having them as different tea blends, which I love that little ebook that came along with it that has all these different recipes and what to do with it. Because sometimes you get seed in and you're just like, what do I do with it? How do I cook with it? You know. So anyways, I love how this turns out. I'm gonna give you guys another quick look of everything in the finished stages. What? In the studio. Okay, so I've been in the studio and I've been planting some of these. Some of them, reading on the directions on the back, actually do better direct sowing because they are just a sprinkler. You just sprinkle them on the soil, dust them in a little bit. So I will be saving those for those areas. But so far what I've planted here, I've got the calendula, seeded up. I decided to do two four inch pots and I did four plants in each pot in just each corner and then eventually when they get big enough I will separate them and plant them in the pots like that. I did the echinacea same thing and then I did lavender. I only decided to do one of them just to see how it does. I sprinkled a few seeds on here. I thought if any of the ones that germinate do well I'll just pinch them out and then replant them like that. And then last I did bachelor butt buttons in these two. Now bachelor buttons kind of grow in fields, you know, you kind of sprinkle them over. So I ended up just sprinkling a bunch of the seeds in here and spray, um, and covering them with a little bit of uh, soil. These ones you can probably also direct. So I just thought I'd try them in some forage pots just for fun. So the ones I have left here are the California poppies, the German chamomile, the hypsip, hyssop, Hyssop, lemon balm, and mint. But these, oh, and the holy basil from the Holy Ghost. Um, uh, these ones I'm, I'm gonna actually still sew in four inch pots, even though they are very much just a press to the surface kind of thing. I don't want to direct sew these outside because I know they will spread like wildfire. So I'm just going to put them in the four inch pots really fast. Just dusting them on top, maybe just sprinkling them on top and watering them in and calling it a day. So the holy, holy basil, I will be <laughs> seeding at one fourth inch depth here really fast. I'm just using my pen and estimating about a fourth of an inch, poking them into the four corners. These seeds are very, very tiny, as you can see. So I'm actually going to sprinkle a couple in each hole like that, and then just cover them with a little soil and call it a day. I am also labeling these, just so you guys know. Brayden, have you ever had holy basil tea? No. I don't think I have either. Yeah. Guess what? What? It's a packet in a packet. Brilliant. So how tiny do you think these seeds are going to be? The same size. You think so? Mm-hmm. You see how small that seed is? Little. Little pieces of dirt. Spacing. Three seeds every 12 inches. Whatever. This is four inches. <laughs> if you nick one seed, that's... Don't do that. Lemon balm. This grows everywhere. do outside. I have some other seeds. I don't feel like planting them right now though. It gives you like um on the back of them it gives you like an illustration of what the seedlings are supposed to look like. Oh woof yourself okay Missy not in my house gonna water them in and they'll be a-okay. <laughs> Day, we had this uh, I heard a growling on my back porch I heard Decky you know protecting his land and I look outside and I'm like who are you fighting with your brother because that's usually the problem and look <laughs> there was a fluffy orange kitty that wasn't peanut butter on our back porch and I was like hi and I thought he'd run away when I went outside no he was very friendly and he was like hi pet me feed me love me he was not appreciative of that 
I'm pointing at Declan if you can't see. We get stray cats in here all the time. Thought he was gonna disappear. He didn't. I ended up staying for a couple days, you know, terrorizing my animals, but he, boy was he cute. I was petting that boy and I was holding him like a baby. I named him Louie, but he's gone now. We were like trying to find him a home. We're like, man, Louie's so sweet. We can't keep him. We too many cats. There's too many things happening. The cats don't like him. Shyla doesn't have any thoughts. Louie also, no thoughts. Did not care about the cats not liking him. He's like, I'm staying. But now he's gone. So the cats are good now. So I'm planting these California poppies. Hold on, I'm etching my eyebrow. Um, and all I'm doing is I'm scattering these and then lightly raking them in with my hand. So that's what you gotta do. And we'll see if these guys pop up. It says it takes seven days to 14 days to emerge. We'll find out. Do you know what I'm a little concerned about, actually? It's my pickling cucumbers. My Any cucumbers, I'm like, they haven't popped up yet. But we have a ton of German chamomile already on the property. This one, somewhere also on the property. <sighs> Who's hungry? This is my son. Say hi. Well, that's it for this week's video. I'm loving how everything turned out. It's one more project checked off the list. Anyways, and until next time, much success in all you do and grow. We'll be seeing you shortly back here at Crowley House very soon. Bye-bye.